If you've seen my previous three videos, then you'll know that this is how my van currently looks, and you'll have seen how I got to this point. In short, I've insulated it and lined the ceiling with carpet and plywood. My first task was to unclip the headliner over the cab so I could work the carpet under it. Next, I removed the right hand side seat belt. I was doing the right side first, so only took off the fixings that were necessary. After removing the cap, I used an adjustable wrench to remove the bolt holding the seat belt in place. There is another bolt lower down, however I realised I didn't need to remove this to carpet under the edge of the lower trim. I then popped this lower trim open using a plastic trim removal tool so as not to damage the housing. Moving along the side of the van, I took out the clips of the sliding door trim and removed this and some of the other covers. These were all easy to remove as they just clip into place. As you can see, quite a lot of dirt had been getting underneath the side door foot trim, so I set about cleaning this up. Next I needed to remove the plywood ceiling panels which I installed in my previous video. I wanted a neat edge when carpeting so we'd need access under these. After cleaning and wiping down the surface of the van with isopropyl alcohol, I removed any dirt and grime that might affect the glue. I unrolled the carpet and remeasured to make sure I had the right quantities. I wanted to do the tricky bit around the front and sliding door seatbelt column first so I wouldn't find myself short of fabric as I got nearer the rear of the van. You might notice the blue masking tape on the beams. This is because I wanted to join up the new carpet to the existing carpet. The tape kept the existing carpet clean while I sprayed the glue. I could then remove it and place the carpet close to the edge creating a neat, clean join. To relieve the stretch on the carpet as I was working, I roughly cut along the edge of the open door. I'm using Trimfix High Temperature Contact Adhesive on the carpet and used approximately one can per metre length of carpet. Sprayed on the carpet and metal and then pressed together once the solvent has evaporated, it creates a really good strong bond. The glue tends to spray all over the place, but I found that white spirit removes any excess really well, especially if it is still wet and removed immediately. I left the lower panel area without any glue behind the carpet, as I would be replacing the black panel I had previously removed. Behind the panel is just soft insulation, so it needed something hard to protect it, which the black panel will provide. I cut this loose fabric away to relieve the stretch on other areas. The wheel arch was a difficult area. Having watched a number of other videos, I was surprised to find that I had too much carpet, so I had to make some precision cuts and conceal some joins to remove this excess. Having finished carpeting the wall, I cut away the excess, leaving a couple of inches that will eventually tuck away under the ply floor for a neat finish. I then went round the van and trimmed and glued the carpet edges to the door. I left about a centimetre of carpet overlap, which could be folded around the door edges, then replacing the rubber seal back on top for a really nice finish. I started to place some of the trims back in place, such as these bolt covers. I cut a hole in the carpet to expose the head of the bolt and push the caps to fit on. I felt it gave a much neater look than having bulges in the carpet. I continued working my way around the van, finishing the edges and replacing fixtures and caps. I should say here that I'm using smoke coloured four-way stretch automotive carpet and that it comes in heights of either 1.4 or 2 metres. Although my van is only small and not higher on the inside than 1.4 metres, once all the curves and contours of the vans were taken into account, the 1.4 metre height carpet would not be suitable, so 2 metres it was. This does create quite a bit of excess, however I do hope to use it on a few other projects for the van at a later date. It was quite tricky working with such a large amount of fabric, but once I had found my starting point, I glued a small section down and went from there. Finally, I replaced the panel, which provides a really nice contrast between the black and mid-grey of the carpet. After a good few hours carpeting, I finished for the day and could come back and continue the other side at a later date. 
I had removed all the fixings in the seatbelt and had also cleaned the van the night before, so I was ready to start carpeting the next morning. Tackling the other side of the van proved to be a bit easier as I now knew what to expect, how the carpet would wrap around the contours of the van and where tactical cuts would have to be made to remove excess carpet. I wanted to mirror the cuts I had made on the previous side for consistency. I did pretty much the same routine as the first side, however it was a much quicker process. I knew my starting point and how much material needed to overlap the edge of the front door. It's also worth mentioning that sharp knife blades will make so much difference, and I ended up changing the blade quite a few times throughout the carpeting process. The only thing I did differently was that I didn't cut out the section of loose carpet under where the black panel will sit. The reason being that when I did this the first time I nearly cut off too much, but also because I was able to work the carpet around better so as not to create too much tension in other areas. Cutting this previously helped relieve that tension. That said it was still a challenge and got tricky around the seatbelt again, but with patience and time I was able to get the carpet down even better than before. Doing this side took the best part of three hours, but definitely took over four hours for the first side. Once the carpet was down, I added all the fixings back and cleaned up any glue overspill. The final part of the carpeting process was to glue a rectangular strip over the beam by the rear door. The only tricky bit here was removing the light and rear door closing mechanisms, but once these were off, gluing the carpet down was a simple process as there weren't too many contours. I had left some overlap with the end of the carpeting I had done on the right and left sides of the van and at this point I could neatly cut along to create a clean edge. Whilst it is slightly visible it's not particularly noticeable and any excess glue could be cleaned up easily with white spirit. If you missed it, check out video number 3 in my camper series where I carpet and ply and line the roof. With that section done, I was finished with the carpeting for now. If you're wondering why I haven't carpeted the doors yet, or why there's a lot of blue masking tape on the doors at the end of this video, I'll be covering this all in my next van build video where I'll take a much more in-depth look at creating a neat edge with carpet and rubber trim. So please subscribe to stay updated for that and to see all my other content. Thanks for watching my efforts at carpeting my Nissan MV200. I hope seeing how I did it was useful.